John described us as the next generation storage technology. So to describe what next generation is going to look like, let me indulge with, uh, with you guys on some past generation here. Um, so to take you back in time, just last century, there was really only two kinds of storage. You had your primary storage and you had your secondary storage. Primary storage lived on desks, fiber channel drives usually, and secondary storage lived on basically tape. Um, now, that was last century. If you look at last decade, there was of course a lot of tiering of storage which took place. You continue to have your fiber channel storage, uh, which was important for all of your databases, exchange, and things like that. But for all of your file storage, there was a new category created called the NAS. Uh, which was still primary storage, but served in the form of files. And there were companies like uh, NetApp, EMC with their Celera, Centera type devices, which became pretty popular in that NAS environment. Uh, on the backup front, or on the secondary storage front, similar thing happened. Uh, instead of tape, a lot of it moved into disk, and companies like Data Domain sort of uh, uh, migrated a lot of that tape data, backup data, onto disk, thereby creating these four categories, if you may, which were used for various different purposes from structured data to unstructured data, which was basically your file data, to further unstructured data, uh, which is basically in the form of uh, backup and snapshots and archives. And then, of course, there was a little bit of uh, tape around. So that's last century, last decade. How will the world look like tomorrow? So if you look at uh, the kind of companies which are getting funded in the Valley today, uh, you know, uh, in, in the world of storage, things like uh, data integrity and data protection and all that is table stakes. What really people are right now trying to address is two big things. One is storage performance, and the other one is basically uh, storage capacity. So all of the performance is pretty much being addressed by SSD type technology. And all of the capacity is basically being addressed by what's called object storage. So that's where uh, Amazon S3, the 800 pound gorilla in this market, uh, uh, has really driven that adoption, especially as it relates to the Web 2.0 space. So if you ever want to build a very large capacity, that capacity, uh, whether it's for backup purposes or archive purposes or for uh, NAS purposes, that capacity today is going to be best served with their object storage technology, especially as uh, disk drives go from being two terabyte to three terabyte to four terabyte type of capacities. Traditional NAS and SAN architectures is just not going to work. And what Bill talked about earlier, uh, the way object storage sort of replicates all of that data and keeps it protected is the best way to uh, get that kind of capacity. And that's essentially what uh, uh, you know Amazon is addressing with S3. And the way that capacity is going to get consumed by enterprises is going to be really the key. So enterprise use cases are still conti continuing to be around a NAS type of use case, a archive type of use case, a backup or disaster recovery type of use case. And what Panzura is basically providing, and I'll take you through the details of it, is a way for large enterprises to be able to consume that capacity, that capacity which, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is available in Amazon in a remote location, uh, so that you can use it as a NAS device, as an archive device, as a backup target, as a disaster recovery uh, um, scenario for you guys. Uh, and that, that's, that's essentially what uh, I'm going to show you guys today. Uh, if you look at um, how enterprises do this today, uh, in the absence of uh, any kind of cloud storage technology, they end up deploying a lot of capacity at each one of these uh, locations where you have uh, presence. And these locations uh, continue to have silos of storage. Those, that storage needs to be then protected at a, a, some sort of a DR location. Uh, uh, of course, you have to have a DR site, which means you have to have a remote data center, uh, which makes this kind of a solution pretty expensive and still not optimal, because when users from London want to access data in New York, they still experience a lot of latency. So they can't really collaborate on that data. They can only work on the data set which is uh, local to them. And that data set then getting sort of uh, protected in the, uh, in the uh, replicated DR storage site. 
making it very expensive, of course, and making it uh, still not most optimal. What people would like to do is basically use Amazon, Amazon cloud storage as a way to not only store all of that data, but have that data be accessible to each one of these locations so that they can all collaborate and use the power of that cloud storage, the on-demand economics of that cloud storage. Now, unfortunately, of course, uh, when you, whenever you're using cloud storage, there's this cloud which comes in between. <laughs> Uh, the cloud being the network, uh, the bandwidth issues, the latency issues, making it a little bit difficult to really do very large uh, project collaboration or very large backups or archive type of uh, use cases into the cloud. That's where Panzera comes in. Uh, our next generation device, which is basically a NAS device, essentially sits at each one of these locations. These are not storage devices. They look like storage devices, but they're basically a caching device. Uh, and they present that entire um, Amazon S3 service as a local storage, giving you pretty much unlimited capacity. So if uh, you guys perhaps saw the numbers uh, in terms of how big the Amazon S3 storage is, uh, it basically uh, gives you that unlimited capacity to that storage using these caching devices as if that storage is sitting local to you. Uh, these devices uh, could be deployed in either a virtual or physical form. Um, they give you local performance, and the way we are able to give that local performance by using a lot of these technologies like SSDs, like caching, uh, we are able to cache, of course, all of the most recently used segments of the data, but we allow users to uh, do pinning of data which uh, guarantees certain kind of data to be always available local to that particular geo. Uh, it gives you 10 giggy performance into the box so that you are able to get uh, LAN throughputs into the cloud. So we have customers uh, working with Amazon who have 10 giggy network connection into Amazon S3 as well as 10 giggy coming into our box and we are able to drive that kind of throughput into the cloud for large archiving projects. Um, it also has built-in protection. Uh, so we talked about uh, all sorts of uh, uh, previous generation things and sort of data protection sort of falls into that area. The next generation data protection is where the system sort of self-protects itself. So the way we do that is using snapshot technology. So these devices which look like pretty much a standard NAS device are continuously taking local snapshots. So as files are coming in, as files are being changed, snapshots are then being um, replicated to the cloud on a continuous basis. We can take snapshots uh, at seconds interval, depending upon how quickly you are driving data into the cloud, storing those snapshots into the cloud, pretty much replicating it instantaneously, providing full stateful information uh, or full stateful data in the cloud, uh, so that if you ever have to go back in time or if you ever have to recover data which you accidentally deleted or corrupted, you're able to just uh, revert back to a previous snapshots and recover that data. And since it's replicated instantaneously in the cloud, you sort of get um, uh, protection from any kind of local disaster as well. So uh, a, a very large multi-petabyte NAS file system doesn't need to be backed up because it's fully backed up with memory or with history in the cloud itself. And since the cloud is unlimited in capacity, you can store hundreds and thousands, and we support up to 10,000 of these snapshots so that you can go back in time a year, a day, an hour, or something like that. And then finally, you, of course, you want to make sure that your data is fully protected. So we talked about security earlier today uh, as well. In our system, every data which gets written to the cloud gets encrypted uh, and with the encryption key managed at your data center. Uh, the, uh, the data is also transferred over uh, encrypted network. Now, we could have just stopped there, um, but uh, uh, I mean, this kind of use case allows uh, customers to be able to use the Panzer device either as just a standard NAS device or as a archive target or as a backup target. But instead, what customers really wanted to do was be able to collaborate. So on top of this, what we built was basically a global file system. This is a very unique technology which allows us to tie each one of these NAS devices into a single namespace, a unified namespace presenting a single file system to the end users so that you can collaborate 
uh, especially around uh, large collaborative or sharing projects like video editing, architectural engineering, design or construction type of uh, projects, uh, or uh, software development when you have uh, users in these various geos, like in London or New York, who are trying to edit the same data which is sitting in the cloud. Uh, we are able to do this using a global namespace, um, as well a uh, presenting a global SIFS NFS, which is what most applications are familiar with, uh, while doing global locking, so that uh, data integrity is always maintained in the cloud. Um, we, of course, localize it at the same time for that particular location. It gets, uh, gives you local read-write performance and integrates with your local uh, Active Directory domain so that you can control with local ACLs. And then finally, it's extremely efficient. It's efficient uh, from two perspectives. Because it presents that global namespace, you sort of manage the whole system as a single system. Um, uh, giving you global management of all of these nodes. And most importantly, the way we interact with each one of these systems and interact into the cloud, um, we do global dedupe across all of the data which is coming in into, uh, uh, into the Amazon cloud. So if we see a particular project file come in from New York, and that same project file shows up in London, uh, and it doesn't have to be exactly the same if it's a similar uh, project file, we are able to deduplicate across those locations and only store unique data set which, uh, uh, which is between those two sites and only store that unique data in the cloud. So making that cloud communication or uh, transfer of data extremely efficient as well as uh, in terms of what cloud capacity gets consumed extremely efficient. So if you, if you look at what else makes this a next generation technology, so typical um, use case of this, this is another topology of uh, how this technology gets deployed. You have on the left hand side all kinds of application servers uh, who request uh, storage access into the Amazon cloud. And if these uh, application servers today need capacity, um, typically, in the past, what you had to do was either do a forklift upgrade or add more capacity, bring in more storage into your data center. Uh, in this particular case, the way we add capacity to our nodes is just by increasing the cloud capacity uh, in Amazon S3, allowing you to have pretty much unlimited uh, storage um, uh, usage in the cloud for archiving and backup purposes especially. Now, many a times it's not about the capacity, it's really about the performance. So if you have number of users who have increased or number of applications which need uh, local performance to that cloud storage uh, uh, in the cloud, uh, all you have to do is basically add more of these appliances uh, which allow you to now suddenly have much higher cache locally in that data center as well as much more IOPS and throughput out of the system for those local apps. So making it really very, very, very modular in terms of how you uh, manage both storage growth as well as your uh, application performance growth. So I mentioned this earlier. Um, we, we do get used in multiple use cases. Our most uh, powerful use case is this global NAS where uh, project data needs to be collaborated across multiple uh, sites. We have uh, customers in, in the healthcare space, we have customers in the media and entertainment industry doing video editing uh, here in New York as well as in LA collaborating on the same movie project, um, uh, especially in a movie project when you have thousands of files being worked on by uh, various different artists in multiple locations. It's very difficult to, uh, one, of course, uh, share that data across these geos, but not only that, uh, be able to do it so that uh, you're not overstepping on each other. So with our global locking and with our um, uh, way to distribute this data with caching giving local performance allows uh, artists to be able to collaborate on the same movie uh, file or uh, whatever digital asset they might be working on uh, almost instantaneously without any data integrity issues. Uh, our second big use case is around uh, archive uh, people who uh, want to use that unlimited capacity of the cloud to be able to uh, drive all sorts of uh, PACS images in the healthcare space, uh, all sorts of uh, financial data. So uh, here in New York, we have financial services customer who have very large amounts of tick data. Uh, that tick data needs to be stored uh, and needs to be accessible to the financial analysts. They're using our system to 
uh, basically archive uh, hundreds and hundreds of terabytes of data into a public cloud where that is then made accessible to multiple geos. Uh, so we have financial analysts in New York, in New Jersey, in London, accessing that same TIG data, working on Excel spreadsheets, which are then shared across multiple of these financial analysts. And they're making changes to these spreadsheets. They are uh, able to collaborate on that spreadsheets while using this sort of historical archived uh, TIG data uh, in the cloud. Uh, our last use case, uh, which we uh, also uh, do pretty good at is the uh, using us as a backup target. Uh, this allows us to interface with most uh, backup tools out there. Um, when, when you use us as a NAS device for all of your unstructured data, clearly that, that's usually 80 to 90 percent of corporate data. So that 80 to 90 percent of corporate data uh, as NAS, uh, if it sits, sits on our system, uh, we pretty much uh, provide data protection in the cloud with all of the versioning which we create. For that 20% unstructured, uh, sorry, structured data, like your SQL uh, databases or Oracle databases or virtual machines or exchange databases, we have customers who are pretty much doing direct database dumps, uh, direct virtual machine backups onto uh, Panzura's NFS or CIF's target getting all of the benefits of the deduplication encryption, and most importantly, the benefits of being able to transfer all of that data in very high speed uh, fashion, opening up uh, multiple uh, threads, if you may, or multiple writes into the cloud. I like to call that raining into the cloud when we write to the cloud, uh, because we open up multiple threads. And of course, when we are reading the data, we rain back from the cloud so that uh, you are able to get van optimization type of benefits. Um, and, and uh, reduce any kind of latency or bandwidth uh, issues with the cloud. Um, this is my last slide pretty much. Um, we are uh, a fairly uh, next-gen unique solution. What makes us uh, uh, unique is this global locking which I talked about which allows you to do this global sharing uh, across multiple geos. Uh, we leverage uh, on, uh, that global file system on the top um, that, that's what makes us uh, different from a typical NAS device. And then uh, from other NAS devices uh, where it comes with a storage, our NAS device does not come with any storage. We instead leverage a, a, a public cloud storage. Uh, and, and the way we deliver this platform is both in a virtual form factor as well as a physical form factor. There's a lot of different use cases of this technology depending upon what you are looking at in terms of uh, deploying in the cloud, whether it be as a NAS target or whether it be as a archive box or as a uh, uh, disaster recovery backup technology. We, we support all those three use cases. Uh, we, we're seeing quite a bit of momentum of this kind of uh, move into, uh, into cloud storage. Um, ESG, which is a storage analyst, calls us the NetApp in the sky. Uh, we recently won uh, won the Interop Award. Uh, very proud of that, and and uh, got chosen as the Red Herring finalist as well. So things are going really well. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, uh, I'll be at our booth, uh, and uh, looking forward to talking to a few of you guys. Thanks much.